Good morning. Today is the day that I am going to be uh, going to a Christmas party this afternoon, this evening, and I'm going to be making my sausage cheese balls. Now these sausage cheese balls are, uh, they're not very fancy at all. In fact, this video is going to be explaining how to make sausage cheese balls the fastest, easiest way with the least number of ingredients that's going to have a lot of flavor. So the first thing you're going to need to do is make sure you have the proper ingredients. The first thing you need is regular original Bisquick. I've tried different pancake mixes. I've tried different waffle mixes. They're not going to taste the same. They're not going to cook right. Use original Bisquick. The next thing you need is Jimmy Dean sausage. I've tried different types of sausages, Owen sausage. Uh, there, there are several sausages. You need to get Jimmy Dean sausage. Uh, regular, if you uh, just want regular. Hot, if you'd like just a little bit more spicy. We're going to do both recipes today, but you need Jimmy Dean sausage in the one-pound package. Uh, if you want to just double up everything, they also have a two-pound, 32-ounce uh, package. So the other thing is getting cheese. You need exactly one pound of cheese for every one pound of sausage. So uh, you can use two eight-ounce bags, or you can use uh, a 16-ounce bag. If you're um, making two batches all at once, you can use a 32-ounce bag. Um, the thing about the cheese is you need to use a good cheese. Sargento cheese is great. Kraft cheese is great. And Borden cheese is great. Anything other than those three, uh, I'm not sure you're going to be happy. I've tried several house brands that are cheaper, and they have not adhered correctly or cooked correctly. And the batch wasn't ruined, but it certainly was not as good as it could have been. When it comes to the Bisquick, this small box of Bisquick is only 20 ounces or one pound, four ounces. You need to try to get that one if you're going to make two batches. The reason for that is, is that you don't have to measure if you use this box of Bisquick because it fits perfectly two batches. Uh, if you're going to mix all two pounds of meat together and then the two pounds of cheese, you just put in this entire box and boom, you've got it all taken care of. If you only want to make one batch, then you can either figure out a way to um, half this Bisquick or you can measure. A measuring cup is going to be about two and one-third cups. Uh, if you don't have a one-third cup, you can use two and a quarter cups or two and a half cups. Uh, but this box gives you um, two batches. Regarding the cheese, you do not need to have one type of cheese. You can mix the cheeses. I typically will try to have cheddar cheese be at least half of the ingredient. Um, many times I will have cheddar cheese being the only type of cheese, but we're going to mix that up today and have cheddar cheese as half of the cheese, uh, or eight ounces of cheddar, and then eight ounces of something else. So our regular sausage cheese balls are going to have cheddar cheese and Italian cheese. The other batch is going to have a blend of cheddar cheese and Swiss Gruyere cheese. I am using a house brand for this cheese uh, because I didn't find one in the uh, more expensive, better cheeses. And uh, But that's okay because my Sargento cheese is going to hold everything together correctly and give me a great batch of sausage cheese balls. You're also going to need a cookie sheet. Um, you can use a non-stick cookie sheet like this one. Uh, you can use an older one that's 20, 30, 40, 50 years old if you want to. It's going to work just fine. You do not need to grease the cookie sheet at all. The grease from the sausage will provide enough of a barrier that nothing sticks to the cookie sheet as long as you don't let the cookie sheet cool down before you break the sausage cheese balls loose from the cookie sheet. You can also use a mixer on this. Now, I'm using a KitchenAid mixer. They have bigger KitchenAid mixers that will allow you to use one KitchenAid mixer for two batches. Um, mine's not big enough for that. 
Uh, you can also make this uh, an event where you mix it all by hand. I did that for 20 years. Mixing it by hand is not a big deal either. So make sure that you have clean utensils, uh, clean bowls. You make sure you've washed your hands. We're going to blend two ingredients together. Uh, that's how I typically do it. Two ingredients at a time. You can choose to, to, to make it the meat and the cheese, or you can choose to make it the meat and the bisquick, or even the bisquick and the cheese. Uh, this time we're going to mix the meat and the cheese together, and then we're going to add the bisquick later. So we're adding the cheese here, then we're going to add the other cheese, and then we're going to add the meat. Now there's not a standard way to open up the sausage, so just however you want to open it up, just make sure you get all of the sausage in there and wash your hands afterwards. So you're going to let that mix and then get your bisquick. If you're going to measure it, go on ahead and measure out two and a third cups or two and a quarter, two and a half, doesn't matter. If you're not going to measure and you just use that box, just throw it in a Ziploc bag, eyeball about what half of the Ziploc bag is, and then add it to the mixer. Let it mix until it's formed into a dough, put it on a plate, and then get ready to make about 125 to 140 sausage cheese balls. Now, how do you know how big that sausage cheese ball is supposed to be? Well, let's go on ahead and we're going to take this one huge ball we're going to cut it in half, so there's half. We're going to cut that in half. Now we're at a quarter. We're going to cut that in half. Now we're at an eighth. We're going to cut that in half. Now we're at 1 16th. We're going to cut that in half. Now we're at 1 32nd. We're going to cut that in half. Now we're at 1 64th. We're going to cut that in half. This is 1 128th. So that big ball. Um, would make about 128 sausage cheese balls. Now, how big is that going to be? It's going to be about an inch across, and it's as easy as that. Go on ahead, start getting your sausage cheese balls and put them in any type of pattern that you want to on your cookie sheet. Um, make sure you have a gap between them so that the air can go around each sausage cheese ball and cook it completely. You're also going to make sure that your oven is set to 350 degrees. So while your oven is warming up, you can go on ahead and uh, put these on a tray and then put in one tray at a time. Once you have your oven cooking a set of sausage cheese balls and you've made your second tray ready to go in afterward, after it, you can go on ahead and fill up a plate with the remaining sausage cheese balls. Depending on your oven, these will cook for between 15 and 20 minutes. So as you can see here, I'm taking these sausage cheese balls out of the oven, but first I'm checking to make sure that they're done. What I'm checking is to make sure the tops are golden brown and some of the cheese has melted onto the bottom of the pan. That's how I like them. You might like them a little bit um, underdone. You might like them more crispy than this. But this is about the consistency that I like. As soon as you get them out of the oven, go on ahead and get a spatula and make sure that each of the sausage cheese balls uh, breaks loose from the pan. Uh, then get a bowl. I like to put some paper towels in that bowl, and then I just dump the sausage cheese balls into the bowl. That will take any grease and absorb it. As soon as you take a batch out of the oven, you put a new batch in and then you prepare for 
the next batch by filling up that cookie sheet again. Soon you'll get into a rhythm where you are putting one pan in and uh, taking the other pan that you just took out and uh, uh, clearing it of any sausage cheese balls, putting it in a bowl, and then refilling that pan. Now, if you put a lot on a pan, sometimes they don't cook evenly. So to make sure that your sausage cheese balls are done, you can go on ahead and check the temperature that it is um, at least 160 degrees. I like to try to get it up close to 200 degrees. That way I know that um, it is fully cooked. And this is what a well-cooked sausage cheese ball looks like. It's got these places that are golden brown on the top. And on the bottom, the cheese is melted out a little bit and made a crust. Savory and crunchy all at the same time. So thanks so much for watching me as we made sausage cheese balls. It's a great, easy recipe with only three ingredients. You can make it with a mixer. You can do it all by hand, whichever way you prefer. Use what ingredients you like. Be uh, creative. You can just use the, the regular old standard, uh, regular Jimmy Dean sausage and sharp cheddar uh, for the whole thing, or you can mix different cheeses in it. Either way, have fun with it. I hope you have a great day. Be blessed. I'm Bob Balch for the That's Jesus channel. Take care.